Canada's Minister of Foreign Affairs has just released a statement on the airstrike. Here is what François-Philippe Champagne had to say. Canada is in contact with our international partners, the safety and well-being of Canadians in Iraq and the region, including our troops and diplomats, is our paramount concern. We call on all sides to exercise restraint and pursue de-escalation. Our goal is and remains a united and stable Iraq. Canada has long been concerned by the Islamic Revolution Guard Corps Quds Force, led by Qasem Soleimani, whose aggressive actions have had a destabilizing effect in the region and beyond. Canada has a lot at stake in the region. The Canadian Armed Forces has personnel and troops deployed in Iraq as part of Operation Impact. CBC's Evan Dyer is in our Ottawa Bureau tracking this angle of the story. Evan, what exactly are Canadian troops doing today in Iraq? Well, Canadian troops today are divided between two missions. One is the NATO mission in Iraq, which is essentially a training mission to uh, build up the Iraqi security forces. Uh, and the other one is Operation Impact, which is much wider than NATO. It was started by uh, a global coalition of over 70 countries back in 2014 to defeat the Islamic State. The Islamic State, uh, as many people remember, in 2014 launched a huge offensive, captured a number of cities, Ramadi, Fallujah, Mosul, the biggest of all, uh, and the world was forced to respond. The Trudeau government ran in 2015 on a campaign promise to remove Canada's jets from that coalition, but just a few weeks, uh, actually act just days, 10 days after they came to power, uh, the Bataclan attacks, the Paris attacks happened, uh, and of course it put Canada in a difficult position. It had already made that commitment to withdraw the jets, but it felt compelled, on the other hand, to beef up other aspects of its presence in Iraq, including the ground mission, the advise and assist mission, uh, which is mostly focused on training the Peshmerga, the Kurdish forces that were fighting the Islamic State. So at the moment, uh, the up to 850 Canadian personnel are um, authorized to participate in Operation Impact or have their names attached to that mission. Another 250 are attached to the NATO mission in Iraq. But it must be said that not all of those people are physically in Iraq. For one thing, Operation Impact also includes forces in Kuwait. There's uh, Hercules aircraft there that does strategic airlift. And so that uh, is run out of Kuwait and the associated crew and ground crew are based there. There's also a tactical helicopter mission and that's based in Erbil in northern Iraq. So. A lot of the Canadian forces uh, that are in the region are in Kuwait and others that are in Iraq are often in northern Iraq in areas that are really not under the control uh, of the Iraqi government and are further away uh, than Baghdad from these popular mobilization forces and militias that have been at the center of the events around the U.S. Embassy. Evan, the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad has now ordered American citizens to leave the country immediately. Yeah. How might this impact Canadians on the ground there? Well, as far as Canadian citizens go, and we don't know, it must be said, how many are in Iraq. We're trying to find that number out. Uh, it, there's already a very blanket travel advisory for uh, Iraq for Canadian citizens. It's avoid all travel, the same as countries like Somalia or Venezuela. Uh, so we don't believe that there would be large numbers of Canadians in Iraq who aren't there in some form of an official capacity. Uh, but of course, there is the embassy itself. It's something of a skeleton crew in Baghdad. For example, it doesn't provide consular services to Canadians. There is also a Canadian diplomatic office in Erbil. But again, that's more of a, a sort of a safer area of Iraq. It's more outside of the current uh, dispute the current fighting and street battles uh, that we see. Canadian forces, though, have been drawn into this kind of thing before because while helping the Kurds, the Kurds uh, staged a referendum on independence in 2017, and that brought them into conflict with these Shia militias, these popular mobilization forces. And it was because of fighting between those forces allied with the Baghdad government and the Kurds, who the Canadians were assisting, that Canada really shifted its focus from helping the Kurds to working with what it calls vetted uh, forces who work directly with the Baghdad government and General Jonathan Vance has told parliamentarians here in committee that Canada will only work with vetted security forces that are under the control of the Baghdad government but of course the Baghdad government includes parties that are linked to these militias some would even say controlled by these militias so that's an increasingly hazy area uh, and the events that are going on now make, may make it even harder to determine who in Iraq really is free of the control of these Shia parties Shia militias and indirectly therefore Iran. Thank you for all of this, Evan. CBC's Evan Dyer in our Ottawa Bureau. Thanks.